Hello, I am Janaki Ram and I am excited to welcome you to the fascinating world of generative AI. From the dawn of traditional machine learning to the intricacies of deep learning and neural networks, we have reached the era of generative AI that's reshaping our digital experiences. In this brand new series, we delve deep into the magic of generative AI powered by open source foundation models and tools. I am very excited to partner with Vulture a specialist cloud provider that offers the most affordable GPU infrastructure to bring you a series of video tutorials unleashing the potential of generative AI through open source foundation models. From the basics of generative AI to deploying and scaling foundation models, this series has it all. In the upcoming videos, I will walk you through the detailed steps of deploying some of the most capable LLMs such as Llama 2 on the Vulture GPU stack to build modern applications. Join the journey as we uncover the marvels of generative AI. Now don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get instant notifications each time I upload a new video. Let's get started. All right. The very first topic in this series is Introduction to Generative AI for Developers. So I'm going to cover the overview of Generative AI and then we'll take a closer look at the evolution of Generative AI, where I'm going to compare and contrast the traditional machine learning versus deep learning versus Generative AI. And then we'll take a closer look at Discriminative AI versus Generative AI. And then I'll also touch upon the key factors that led to the rise of generative AI, followed by the applications and the use cases of generative AI. So this is a foundational aspect of this series where we will understand generative AI from a developer's perspective. So let's get to the overview. Welcome to the fascinating world of generative AI. This concise series delves into the mechanisms that empower machines to create, innovate, and even mimic human-like creativity. From the foundational principles of neural networks to the intricacies of models such as Llama and Stable Diffusion, this course will equip you with the knowledge and tools to integrate generative intelligence into your applications. So, let's embark on this transformative journey together. Generative AI hit the headlines with the launch of ChatGPT in November 2022. It grew in popularity and became mainstream in 2023. However, Generative AI did not appear out of nowhere. It's more of an evolution than a revolution. As a developer, leveraging the power of Generative AI to build next-gen applications, it's important to understand the history of AI research and the key milestones that led to Generative AI. So let's take a look at traditional machine learning and then understand more about deep learning and neural networks before delving into the details of generative AI. So machine learning or ML is a subset of artificial intelligence that focuses on developing algorithms that enable computers to learn from and make data-driven decisions. While deep learning and neural networks have taken center stage in recent years, they are just a fraction of the ML universe. Before neural networks became mainstream, there was traditional or classical machine learning, which continues to be widely applicable and foundational to the field of artificial intelligence. So at its core, traditional machine learning involves algorithms that learn patterns from data and then use these patterns to predict future data or make other kinds of decisions. A machine learning model is an entity that learns patterns from existing data to perform predictions on unseen data. The fundamental difference between conventional programming and machine learning is the way you write the program. In conventional, pro in conventional programming, you create business logic that's going to take the data as input and then gives the result. Whereas in machine learning, we take historical data 
and a mathematical algorithm to train the algorithm with the data to evolve a pattern which is called the machine learning model. One of the key requirements of machine learning, the traditional machine learning, is feature engineering, which involves selecting and creating the most relevant input variables that influence the learning ability of a model and thus the accuracy of predictions. For example, in a typical model that's going to predict the price of a house, the features would involve selecting variables like the location, the size of the house, the, the age of the house and some of those parameters. Now, these parameters that influence the learnability of the algorithm or the model is actually called as a feature. So, traditional machine learning is heavily dependent on what is called as feature engineering. Now, traditional machine learning deals with algorithms such as linear regression, logistic regression, decision trees, naive Bayes theorem and k-means clustering algorithm. Now, these are some of the mathematical models that are applied in the world of traditional machine learning and along with data, they are used to train the models. Traditional ML remains an indispensable tool in data scientist arsenal. It needs less computing power and the training process is not resource intensive, which means you can actually train traditional ML models on your desktop PC or a Mac without the requirement of having a GPU or a high, highly powerful compute resource at your disposal. Now let's take a look at deep learning and neural networks. So deep learning is one of the most transformative and influential subsets in AI. Powering applications from voice recognition to autonomous vehicles, it offers capabilities once thought to be exclusive to human cognition. Deep learning is a subset of machine learning that employs neural networks with many layers. Hence the term deep neural networks. Now these networks are used to analyze various factors of data. These networks can learn and make independent decisions by analyzing vast amounts of data and identifying patterns. So central to deep learning is the concept of neural networks that's highly inspired by the structure of a human brain. Neural networks are composed of neurons, layers, weights and biases and also activation functions. Though this is debatable, their architecture is similar to how the human brain works. So let's take a look at some of these building blocks of neural networks. So neurons are the basic units of a neural network. They are inspired by the neurons in the human brain. Each neuron receives input, processes it, and then passes that to uh, another uh, neuron in the next layer. So that is the basic unit of any neural network. Layers are the different levels of a neural network. There are three main types of layers, an input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. The input layer receives the input data, the hidden layer performs the processing, and the output layer generates the final output. Weights and biases are parameters within the network that transform input data within the network's layers. A neural network learns by adjusting these weights and biases to minimize the difference between the predicted output and the actual target value. You, you heard of what is called as hyperparameter tuning. Now in deep learning, this is a very important process where you adjust certain parameters of the neural network like the number of neurons, the number of layers, the number of activation functions to adjust how accurate the neural network is. And that is what is called as the hyperparameter tuning. Activation functions are used to determine the output of a neuron. Uh, for example, an activation function includes the ReLU, sigmoid, tan H functions. Now, deep learning models learn by iteratively processing a data set uh, adjusting the internal parameters to minimize the prediction error. They rely on techniques called forward propagation and backward propagation to 
learn from the input data. So let's understand more about the uh, backward propagation and forward propagation. Forward propagation involves calculating the predicted output using the current model parameters. Once the output is determined, the loss calculation measures the difference between the predicted output and the actual target. To refine the model further, back propagation is employed, which adjusts the model weights and biases to minimize the loss. Additionally, optimization algorithms such as gradient descent and its variants like stochastic mini batch Adam are, are used to update the model weights, ensuring better and more accurate predictions over it over a period of time. Some of the popular deep learning neural network architectures include convolutional neural networks or CNNs, recurrent neural networks or RNNs, long short-term memory, LSTM, and gated recurrent units, GRU. Unlike traditional machine learning, deep learning depends on vast amounts of data for training. It demands significant computational resources, especially for training larger models. Deep neural networks can often act as black boxes, making it challenging to understand their decision-making process. So now let's take a look at generative AI. So deep learning and neural networks serve as the foundations for generative AI. Some recent advances in, in, in research in deep learning have resulted in the rise of generative AI. Generative AI is about building models that can generate new data that mimic some uh, given data. Rather than simply predicting a label or a value, generative models output a sample that is drawn from the distribution as the uh, training data. So ChatGPT is one such example where you input certain prompt and you get back a very different output. So you are essentially dealing with a generative AI model behind the scenes. So deep learning and neural networks, as we have seen, serves as the foundations of generative AI. Now imagine having a set of photos of cats. A typical neural network would classify whether a given image is a cat or not. A generative model, on the other hand, would try to create a new image that looks like a cat, but it is a different version of the input image. So as discussed earlier, generative AI extends neural networks with advanced and complex architectures capable of producing and recreating content. The most popular generative models are GAN, which is Generative Adversarial Networks, or Variational Autoencoders, or VAEs, that leverage deep neural network structures. So GANs comprise of two networks a generator and a discriminator. The generator tries to produce fake data, while the discriminator tries to distinguish between the data and the fakes. Over time, the generator gets so good that the discriminator can't tell real from fake. Now, VAEs, or the, on the other hand, the variational autoencoders work by encoding data into a lower dimensional space and then decoding it back they ensure that the encoded data is close to the original and during this process, they can generate new similar data. So, unlike typical neural networks where you adjust weights based on predictions, generative models often have different training dynamics. For instance, GANs involve a game where the generator and discriminator compete leading the model as a whole to a point where it generates data almost indistinguishable from the real samples. So that was a quick walkthrough of various milestones that we have seen in the AI research. Traditional or classical machine learning followed by deep neural networks and now we are experiencing generative AI. Now let's take a closer look at what is called as the generative AI and the discriminative AI. Traditional machine learning and deep learning models are categorized as discriminative AI. 
They typically deal with models that discriminate the input data as opposed to generative AI that generates new data which is similar to the input. So discriminative AI and generative AI are two sides of the machine learning coin each with a very distinct approach and set of applications. So let's take a closer look at discriminative AI. So discriminative models learn to distinguish between different classes or labels of data. They map input data to a specific output. These models capture the boundaries between various classes. Instead of modeling how each class of data is generated, they focus on modeling the decision boundary between classes. Let's consider a data set of images containing cats and dogs. A discriminative model like a convolutional neural network or a CNN is trained to label an input image as either a cat or a dog. It learns the features and patterns that distinguish cats from dogs and vice versa. Discriminative models are trained to classify data into a specific class or predict a discrete value. Models that can perform face recognition or models that are trained to predict the price of a house are examples of discriminative models. When it comes to learning techniques used by discriminative models, they are mostly trained through supervised learning. It's a common approach used in deep learning where the models are trained to make predictions based on an input-output pair. It's called supervised because much like a student learning under the supervision of a teacher, the model learns from labeled data. When a neural network is based on unsupervised learning, the models can be adopted for tasks such as clustering where the objective is to separate data into distinct groups without pre-existing labels. Now, if that was discriminative AI, let's take a look at generative AI. Unlike supervised or the discriminative AI models, generative models learn the underlying probability distribution of the data. They can generate new data samples that are similar to the input data. These models try to understand how the data in each class is generated. By learning the distribution, they can produce new samples from the same distribution. These models try to understand how the data in each class is generated. By learning the distribution, they can produce new samples from the same distribution of the sample data. Some of the examples of generative AI include text generation, where a given data set let's say of uh, Shakespeare's writings, a generative model like an RNN or more recently a transformer can produce new sentences or even entire passages that mimic Shakespeare's style. The output isn't any existing sentence from the original works, but rather a new creation inspired by the patterns and structures from the model observed. Image creation is based on generative adverse, adversarial networks uh, or GANs that we have seen in the previous uh, discussion, they are very popular for image generation tasks. Trained on a data set of human faces, a GAN can generate images of entirely new faces that it has never seen before, but which look convincingly real. The generative AI models are often trained based on self-supervised uh, learning which is a type of machine learning where the data provides the supervision itself. In other words, it's a method the model learns to predict a part of input data from other parts of part of the input data. So, for example, in a self-supervised machine learning task utilizing images, the model might be tasked with predicting a part of image given the rest or predicting the color version of a black and white image. The primary difference between the two approaches lies in the objective. Discriminative models trained using supervised or unsupervised techniques aim to classify or distinguish between classes, focusing on their differences. In contrast, generative models aim to understand and replicate the data structure, focusing on generating new samples that resemble the original data. These models are trained using the self-supervised learning technique. The primary difference between the two approaches 
lies in their underlying objective. Discriminative models trained using supervised or unsupervised technique aim to classify or distinguish between classes, while generative models focus on generating new samples that resemble the original data. These models are trained using the self-supervised learning technique. So that was a differentiation between what is called as discriminative AI and generative AI. I hope you found this section useful. Now we are going to look at some of the other use cases and scenarios where generative AI is going to be applied. So let's take a look at the applications and use cases of generative AI. So Gen AI can be used in a wide range of applications across numerous fields. Uh, some of the areas include uh, text generation. So AI models can generate human-like text given some prompt. For example, OpenAI's GPT powered by a large language model called GPT is a well-known example of this. It can write essays, answer questions, create written content for websites, and even write poetry. Now, in uh, some of the videos in this series, we are going to take a look at foundation models that are quite capable, almost as capable as GPT-4 to do some of these tasks. Now, coming back to the use cases, when it comes to art and design, generative AI can be used to create new pieces of digital art or to assist in design. For instance, Midjourney, a very popular tool to generate AI-based images, uses generative AI models to create and transform images un in unique and artistic ways. Uh, Stable Diffusion, a well-known text-to-image model released in 2022, is used by many image generation tools, such as, uh, of course, Midjourney. And uh, when it comes to music composition, Generative models based on OpenAI's MuseNet or Meta's AudioCraft can create original pieces of music by learning from a wide range of musical styles and compositions. Now, continuing on the scenarios, we have quite a few. Uh, one of the most popular use case is AI-assisted code. Large language models are LLMs that are trained on code available in the public domain or used to build AI assistants for developers. For example, GitHub Copilot is a popular tool that's integrated with IDEs like Visual Studio Code to automatically generate code in mainstream programming languages like Python, Go, and so on. Similarly, Gen AI is also used in drug discovery. It is used to generate novel molecular structures for potential new drugs. An example of this is in silico medicines generative models which are used to create uh, new molecules for drug discovery. And of course, going beyond these are the video and image enhancement tools. Gen AI can be used to enhance the quality of images and videos. For instance, FaceApp uses generative models to transform faces in photos, such as changing the person's age, gender, or even hairstyle. Looking at uh, the last use case, which is becoming very popular, is fashion and retail. Generative AI models are used to create new fashion designs or to visualize clothes on different body types. Stitch Fix, one of the tools uses generative models to create new fashion designs based on user preferences and trends. So going forward, we'll see how generative AI has been influenced by some key factors making it mainstream. So many factors have contributed to the rise of generative AI. Let's take a look at uh, some of the top factors. The new algorithms and architectures that have come as a result of advancements in deep learning algorithms have led to significant improvements in capabilities of generative models. For example, the GANs or the other neural network architectures such as transformers have been game changers in this field, enabling the generation of highly realistic images, audio, and even video. The second important factor is the availability of large-scale data sets. 
The rise of big data has provided the fuel for training more sophisticated generative models. These models often require large amounts of data to capture the underlying distribution effectively and the availability of large scale data sets have made it possible. The third important element is of course the computational power. The advancement in hardware technology, especially GPUs, TPUs and some of the cloud-based distributed computing architectures have made it possible to train complex multi-layered deep neural networks. These advancements uh, have also made it possible to work with larger data sets and more complicated models. The other important factor is definitely giving credit to open source uh, and the rise of open source software and libraries. Libraries and frameworks such as uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch and Keras have made it possible to build, train and deploy generative models. They provide high level flexible APIs and have been instrumental in democratizing AI and fo fostering a culture of shared knowledge within the AI community. Today, the open source technologies and the open models are accelerating the generative AI significantly by making them more accessible and making them possible to adopt in a wide range of use cases, which brings us to the last key factor, the use cases. Generative AI has potential applications in many fields that we have seen earlier. And this versatility uh, when it comes to infusing Gen AI into a variety of applications and use cases has created a lot of momentum and uh, uh, both the research community, the academic community, uh, as well as the technology enterprise uh, technology community have been embracing generative AI and uh, uh, bringing some of these models to very advanced use cases like the one that we have seen, including the genome analysis and um, areas like molecular biology and healthcare. So the versatility of Gen AI increases interest in the field and drives further research and development, which is a great sign. So that brings us to the end of the first one, the first video in this series where we have seen the evolution of generative AI and discuss some of the concepts like discriminative versus generative AI and some of the use cases, applications of generative AI and of course the factors that have led to the rise of generative AI. So in the next video, I'm going to do a deep dive on foundation models. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the notification button. I'll see you in the next video.